Welcome to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. Lynn Thompson along with Terry Sims on a somber uh, day here at BCU. The Cats hit the road. They go to Dover, Delaware in one of the worst atmospheres and one of the worst performances of the year. The Cats lose it, upset, a big upset, one of two amongst the MEAC leaders this past weekend. The Cats lose it 16-13, had a chance, Coach Sims, to really uh, take full control of the MEAC title race. And, uh, and as we look at it right now, uh, we're now back basically what uh, uh, in a three-way tie for for first place amongst the league leaders and uh, we've got to win out now and get a little help uh, to get to the celebration bowl let's talk about uh, the fiasco in Dover uh, freezing night 36 38 degree weather and uh, the cats were basically walking in like as what if we were in ice the whole game yeah and I think you know you got to first take your head off to Coach Milstead and his staff. They put a great plan together uh, to defend us uh, uh, offensively. And, you know, they put a good plan together with, with their offense. I think defensively we played well enough to win. We just did not put the ball in the end zone uh, enough on the offensive side of the ball. Did you anticipate a game of this nature? Uh, well, well, you've been in Del Dover a couple of times, and it's always a very tough place to play of all the places that we've gone historically, Dover seems to be the most troubling place. Logistically, it's tough to get in and out of Dover to play. And, uh, and, and for some reason, uh, even some of the better teams in, in the history of BCU football have struggled at Alumni Stadium. They have, and I think, you know, to, to be successful in that stadium, you have to get started fast and keep it going. And we just did not do that, not scoring on our first three uh, possessions yesterday. Well, the football game opened up with uh, Delaware State receiving the football coach, and uh, and we uh, get a great punt return by Tyree Spain down to the 20-yard line, and we don't take advantage. We miss a field goal, but we'll talk about that a little later on for the time being. Let's take a look at the highlights uh, from this big loss that the Cats suffered 16-13 in Dover against Delaware State.
It's a new day of Bethune-Cookman University's changing landscape of bold leadership in business, education, research, and STEM, creating innovative ways for new Wildcats to change the world. Get ready. The tide is rising. It's time for you to catch the next wave in higher education at Bethune-Cookman University. It's MEAC football season, and things are about to get wild. Could the Aggies bury the Bison? Or will the Bears make a run at the ratings board? Will the Rattlers strike before the Bulldogs bite? Will the Eagles sink their talents into the title or feel the Hornets sting? Could the Wildcats wrap their jaws around victory? Or will the Spartans win out in the hunt? It's the road to the 2019 Celebration Bowl. May the wildest team win. This December 21st, the best in HBCU football will collide in Atlanta at the Celebration Bowl. MEAC versus SWAC. Champion versus champion. Only one team will rise above the rest and claim the coveted Celebration Bowl trophy. Come join the celebration at Mercedes-Benz Stadium this December. For more information, visit thecelebrationbowl.com. Welcome back to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. The Cats hit the road to Dover, Delaware, lose a tough one, 16-13, which surprised virtually everybody, along with the upset uh, that North Carolina a and suffered at Morgan State. This completely shook up the MEAC Conference title race. Now there's a three-way tie. South Carolina State, BCU, and A&T tied atop the league standings, Coach. And uh, But let's focus on, on offensively what we did or did not do uh, at the game this this particular weekend. It was uh, basically uh, uh, the lack of a performance, I guess. We just could not do what, what we thought we wanted to do, and it's all started with the opening drive. Uh, we take a punt down to the 20-yard line. Tyree Spain does a great return, broke a couple of tackles, goes against the grain and gets it down in the red zone to start the game off. And the first play of the game, you try to uh, – you know, in RPI, you try to hit uh, Quayshawn Bird out of the backfield, and and uh, Akevius just cannot get it to him the right way, throws it behind him a little bit, and he, he falls down trying to catch the ball. Yeah, and, and a few things happened up there. You know, we had a miscue up front and uh, a little bit too much pressure on the quarterback. Bird didn't get his correct depth uh, and width on, on the play, and that caused it to be a little short, and then he tried to cut off his inside foot to get to the ball. So there, there were a few things that went wrong on that play, things that were not characteristic of us. Uh, and, and I think, you know, you can look at the, the football game and, and, and see mistakes like that throughout the whole game offensively, that we did things that were uncharacteristic of ourselves. and it caused us not to be productive on offense. Three opportunities early in the football game to score in the first quarter. We not take advantage of either one of them. As a result, they do. They, uh, we muff a punt, which is uncharacteristic, Tyree Spain. And uh, to his credit, go Coach, the punt was into the sun. You could see him trying to shield his eyes. It was a, in a, a wind up top, and the ball was swirling. Uh, he muffs it. They recover it. Uh, they take advantage of that. The other one was a uh, a deep out that, uh, well, a quick out that, that uh, the defensive back jumps the route, takes it down to the two-yard line. We kind of stuff them there. Uh, but they took advantage of the mistakes that we made. Exactly. And, you know, with, with uh, you know, speaking of the, the route, we had a, a receiver that ran the route too deep, and, and it was supposed to be a timing route. Quarterback throws the ball, the receiver's at the wrong depth. Uh, and with the Spain issue, Spain was actually a uh, victim of friendly fire. He was actually hit mm -hmm. by one of our gunners first before he caught the ball. So that kind of took a little bit of his concentration away. 
um, and not to make excuses for him, but that's tough. If you ever uh, caught a punt, if anyone bumps into you before you catch the punt, it, it kind of takes your focus away a little bit, and that's what happened. Uh, then uh, when they scored, they kicked the ball. They they were they were definitely committed not to kicking the ball to Mr. Robinson. No, they were not going to kick the ball to Jimmy Robinson. And uh, you know, a couple of their coaches told me before the game, we're not kicking it to one. And you know, they they schemed us up. It was a great plan on their part not to kick it before right. ball because Jimmy does add a spark for us uh, when he touches the ball on special teams. He either runs it all the way back or he gets us in great. So they kick it to his brother. And uh, Jimmy, Jimmy the third, or Jimmy Jr. as everybody calls him, uh, coach, he tries to shield it, trying to put the, his hand over his face mask to see, and uh, had open field, catches the ball and takes off, and they said he ruled, he called for a fair catch. And watching the film this morning, he was actually running, and we teach him to catch the ball like this. Elbows together, forehead to belly. That's what he was doing. And they said it was a fair catch signal. And, the, you know, the officials, they, their explanation was anytime the hands are raised above the chest, they're going to call a fair catch. Coach, on the day, Jimmy Robinson touches the ball only five times offensively. Teron Mallett, no touches. Uh, you only give the ball. Isaac Washington, uh, not a factor. Five carries, 14 yards on the day. Uh, the leading rusher was Akevius, uh, almost 18 carries for uh, close to 60, 70 yards. Uh, they completely took us out of what our game plan was. What's the answer to that? We have to be more disciplined as coaches on offense and, and, and you know, stick to our game plan and not, you know, get rattled and not uh, allow anyone to take us out of our game plan. They changed defensive coordinators. Uh, we had some looks that we had not seen uh, a lot of on film. But we have to continue to make adjustments and stay within ourselves and do the things that have, you know, allowed us to be successful, uh, you know, during this football season. So now before we go to break, now this is on tape. ENT gets a chance to look at this. They look at the South Carolina State game. So it's obvious we can expect a little bit of combination of both of those two tapes to go out on the open market and everybody's going to try to stop the run. They are. They're going to try to stop the run, and we're going to have to get, you know, our, our passing game back up to cue. And, you know, we, we got to let the guys that have been explosive for us, we have to let them touch the football. Back. Okay. We'll come back in just a few moments. We'll take a look at the defensive unit, play a great football game, and even score some points. Back in just a moment. Hi. I'm Brent Kreit. What will we do to move the university toward greatness? To truly succeed, it takes sharp and up-to-the-minute skills, intercultural know-how, and leadership. As Mary McLeod Bethune knew, such ambitions will require a commitment that must be continuous. We will make the student experience the North Star for all our decision-making. The new generation of BC begins with you. Nine teams will battle for the spotlight. One will go home with the title. Rivals will clash. Wills will be tested. Some will feel the thrill of victory. Others will suffer the agony of defeat. Who will get shut out in the dark? Who will be left standing in the limelight? Find out on the road to the MEAC Football Championship. This December 21st, the best in HBCU football will collide in Atlanta at the Celebration Bowl. MEAC versus SWAC. Champion versus champion. Only one team will rise above the rest and claim the coveted Celebration Bowl trophy. Come join the celebration at Mercedes-Benz Stadium this December. For more information, visit thecelebrationbowl.com. It's a new day of Bethune-Cookman University's changing landscape of bold leadership in business, education, research, and STEM, creating innovative ways for new Wildcats to change the world. Get ready. The tide is rising. It's time for you to catch the next wave in higher education at Bethune-Cookman University.
Welcome back to the BCU Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson with Terry Sims. The Cats now fall to 4-2 and two in conference play with the loss 16-13 at Delaware State. A three-way tie now on top of the MEAC standing, South Carolina State, BCU, and A&T all tied with the same record. And, uh, Coach, uh, you know, we got a big game coming up this weekend against A&T on the road. But, but, but uh, before we talk about it, let's talk about special teams. Uh, you know, we, we missed the first field goal uh, of, of the game, and that, that was – let's talk about that. Yeah, I, and, you know, I, I think, you know, you go through these pains when you have a young kicker, and we just had a little bit more production offensively when Uriel was a freshman, but we went through the same thing. Yeah, you did. We, we went through the same thing with him missing, you know, kicks, and it's just getting them in the groove, and we, we got to do that with Javier, and I think he'll be fine. He just has to get over it. We want – him to get over these growing pains a little faster than, you know, sooner than later. But and he missed uh, the extra point. He missed the extra point, and, and it was, he kicked the ball so high, uh, you know, the officials had trouble uh, looking at it. It looked from the sideline like it went in, but they say it was outside the goalpost, so uh, outside the upright. And that's their call to make. Can't challenge that. He has by far the strongest leg of any kicker that's come through here, Coach, and, and it, what a talent. But but uh, did that factor into your decision uh, to to elect to go for it on fourth and goal at the five-yard line? In the first? It did. It did. Uh, you know, and you never know. People say, well, you, you, you don't leave points on the field. Well, right now we have a kicker that's struggling a little bit, so those aren't guaranteed points. Uh, and he's a young kicker, so we have to get him through this little phase and not kill his confidence. And I just felt like it was it was a gamble. And let's gamble with the offense and see if we can get six points out of this thing uh, instead of three. Okay, so now we, 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 we turn our attention to Jimmy Robinson because um, a lot of the touches historically have been the ones that uh, that Jimmy would get in special teams. He got none on the day. Uh, and they had a rugby style punter that, that challenged the line of scrimmage. Uh, and then was able to get off a couple of, of decent punts on the day. Um, did that factor in on, on, on any of the special teams play or the coverage or anything like that? Well, I think, you know, on, on a few of the special teams plays it did. And uh, Jimmy, the third, uh, he, he had an opportunity one time to actually tackle uh, the, the punter. He didn't. And sometimes kids get gun shy because he, he got a rough in the punter call against North Carolina Central. Uh, and he was just a little hesitant on, on tackling him, but you know, he, he understands that if the punter's moving and running, that he's live, but I think that split second uh, that he did not tackle him, he got the punt off, and uh, we, we ended up having to start 25 yards deeper uh, than we would have if he had just made the tackle. So there, there are little things that happen that, that when you're playing with some freshmen, they're going to make freshman mistakes. You're absolutely right, Coach. And, and one of the things that, uh, that we talk about now is as we look at, uh, at the, the rest of the league now, Coach, uh, it's once again wide open. Uh, as, as, as the word trickled down that a and had gotten upset late in the football game, uh, did that factor in any of your decisions on the field? No. I, I wasn't uh, really aware of it. You know, I heard an announcer said, I think, late into our game that uh, a and had lost, but it didn't factor in anything that we were doing. We were just trying to put some things together to put some points on the board and, and win the football game that we were in. Okay, because one of the things that we did, we, we managed to get a couple of drives going, Coach. Uh, one of them got down to the uh, fifth five-yard line again, and, uh, and we lost that possession on a, on a measurement, which was kind of uh, – different uh, because uh, there, there was a holding call that was waved away on fourth down then the chains moved uh, and and yes and it was fourth and it was fourth and ten at, from the 15 and the ball was on the five and uh, and as a result they measured and said we came up an inch short and, and I, I think when you look at it and I'm, I'm not here to criticize you know officials but uh, we, we saw it, and they saw it. The, the, the ball was tackled on the five-yard line. It was originally on the 15-yard line. That's 10 yards. Uh, you know, the chains were moved by the chain crew, I guess, prematurely or whatever, and 
the nose of the ball found its way behind the line instead of on the line again. So, you know, it, it, things happen. We just have to continue to play well to, to not put ourselves in positions like that. Well, Coach, uh, e even with the special teams, uh, offensive output down considerably the last two football games, we got to figure this thing out quickly because coming up, a big date in Greensboro, North Carolina, the elimination game. Uh, we got to win it to stay in it. Am I right? Got to win it to stay in it. It's no sugar coating and no easy way to say it. We have to win the football game on Saturday to stay in contention for the conference championship. Come back in just a few moments. We'll go around the league and talk about the impact of this football game coming up Saturday. Let's go around the MEAC here on the Wildcat Football Insider as we prepare to wrap things up. Uh, the Cats suffered one of two major upsets on the road, the two leaders uh, losing it in grand style. 16-13, we talked about that earlier, the Cats lose to the Hornets. But down the road in Baltimore, just about an hour and a half away, a and suffers their second consecutive loss to Morgan State, Coach. Uh, that was not a big, as big a surprise as most folks would think uh, because everybody said that those two teams match up well against each other. And the, I guess the two philosophies, you know, uh, they're just combative teams. They, they do. And one thing that, that Coach Wheaton and his staff has done at, at Morgan State, they have established a run. And they run the football well, but they also have a passing game that complements that. They, they're a football team that I didn't think was bad when we played them. Right. So they're catching their stride now. The hottest team in the league, Norfolk State. Since they left us, Coach, they, they, they gave us fits, a turnover, uh, allows us to, to score the game-winning touchdown, and then we stop them uh, with some sacks as they were trying to come down again to p potentially tie the game. Uh, and they, they just blow. They've had two big blowout wins, Coach. They, uh, they blew out Howard the week before last, and they go down to North Carolina Central on Central's homecoming on yesterday, 38-21, and Latrell Scott's got them playing. He has them playing, and, and you can see that when, when they played us, or you can see it even before that. You watch film, th those guys play hard. Great quarterback, some young running backs, and some good receivers. They, and, and they use them well. And when, when you look at their defense, their defense is a bend but don't break defense. And uh, I, I just think they have a complete team right now and they're playing well. But if you uh, write the ship 62-21 over Howard University, that was a good way to bounce back after the heartbreaking loss to A&T. It was, uh, you know, wish we could have bounced back like that, but uh, he did, he, he, he lost a tough one uh, the week before, but 
he came right back in and those guys got to work and, and, and came out with a win. And Sam, you was off last weekend, but that sets up this weekend. Coach, a lot of big games going on. Uh, Morgan State will host Virginia University of Lynchburg with a chance to make it two wins in a row for them. Uh, Norfolk State will go to Delaware State looking to make it, what, three wins in a row for them. South Carolina State will be at Central, uh, and that, that will be a chance for, for Buddy Pugh to continue his his trek towards the championship, how it goes to FAMU. Uh, FAMU's licking their chops right about now in the big one, us in Greensboro, in the elimination bout to see who's going to stay in contention for the title. It's simple, win or go home. That's what it is right now. You, you, you continue to win and have an opportunity to win it, or you lose and you go home. So, uh, as we sit here now today, Coach, uh, you've got to figure out with your offensive staff, how do we – how do we continue to run the football? Because for the last two weeks, teams have, have been able to take away what we do best. And I know that's what a defensive coach says he's going to do. But uh, we can't abandon the run that fast. No, and we're not going to abandon the run. We're going to get in and we're going to figure out a way uh, to run the football. We know we're going to see a lot of the same looks that we have seen the last two weeks. Yeah. So we got to get in and, and put some stuff together to be successful and put our, guy, our players in position to be successful. With a team is, with as many playmakers as we have, you've got to be able to spread the ball around, uh, continue to get points. I think in the last two games we've scored, what, 18 and 13 points, and the defense has scored some of those points. So I know that that's a major concern of yours. It is, and it's not acceptable. Uh, we, we, we have to be better, and we will be better. Well, the, the question is, is, can we fix it this week? We have to. If we want to keep our track alive to the MEAC Championship and a date in the Celebration Bowl. And the question will, and the test will be given this coming Saturday in Greensboro, North Carolina, the Cats and the Aggies up at a and It's going to be an ESPN game. For those of you who can't make it, uh, make sure you log on to the Cats Digital Network or ESPNU, and uh, we'll make sure we need to see you there. For Terry Sims, that's the Wildcats. I'm in town. See you in Greensboro.